Hey, welcome back to another edition of Running with James. My name is James Wyatt, and I am with BC Fitness. I'm a coach and owner. We are a High Rocks affiliate gym, and today we are talking about High Rocks. We're continuing our series on High Rocks, the functional fitness competition, and this is an event that is accessible to anyone. But if you're going to do your best, you got to train properly. So today we're going to talk about that. We're going to get into two of the very first events, the skier and the sled push. Now, these two events, a lot of times you'll see people go out hot. You'll see them go on hard. So these are two events really aren't something you're going to win it on, but you could definitely lose it if you're not ready for them. Change your mind, change your life. So we're going to start with the skier, right? So the skier basically is definitely an aerobic movement. Um, but here's the thing. When you're coming around your first lap and you get to the skier and you've got, you know, 20 other people with you doing a skier, it is really easy to go out super hot and just start cranking away at this thing, right? So I mentioned it earlier that on the first two events, you really can't win it, but you can definitely lose it. So if you go in too hot or you crank too much or you're going too fast, you're, you're not being efficient, then you can blow yourself up and then ruin your race, right? So the skier is real simple, okay? So the first thing you want to think about doing in your training, right? Because this is what we're talking about, how to train properly for it, better form. So we want to think about where we position ourselves first on the skier. So you want to find a good position. So if you're a little shorter, you may need to scoot up a little bit. If you're a little bit taller, you want to get to the back. But you want to make sure that when you're, you're skiing, this thing's not rocking back and forth, okay? The next thing you want to start by doing is, what, what I actually like to do is when I start skiing, is I like to get a little bit of momentum going. So I'll start with a short, quick pull, a few short, quick pulls. And you want to think half to pockets with a hip hinge. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to create as much power, as much force as you can to pull down. But you don't need to be pulling all the way down to your feet or even to your knees. So you're getting as much extension as you can and you're pulling it through your hips, right? So I say hat to pocket. So really, it's really just like if you've ever been skiing before, cross country skiing, it's just a very similar thing. You have the poles, right, that you're pushing through the ground. Now for training techniques, you really wanna think about doing this just like running is the majority of it should probably be nice and easy. So you're doing long sets where you're doing 10, 15 minutes, maybe don't start at 10 or 15, maybe start at five, then work your way to 10, 15 minutes, where you're doing nice and easy pulls for extended periods of time, keeping your heart rate down and working on your form, okay? So I mentioned earlier, you don't have to just crank away at this thing. You really wanna just think about nice, slow pulls where you can breathe and learn how to generate power. Okay, you don't have to jump, you don't have to do all the, so those are all definitely different forms you can utilize, but learning how to do slow, easy movements will really help you become more, much more efficient. Then, in some of your compromise uh, running sessions, or maybe even your threshold sessions, or maybe a hit session, you can do short bursts where you're doing 30 seconds, 150 meters, where you're just trying to crank out as many meters as you can, or as many calories as you can, to really get your heart rate up and work on generating power, okay? So, the skier is one of those things you just really, honestly, more than anything, you need to spend some time on it, developing the efficiency, of developing the form. So, remember, hat to pockets, hip hinge, engage the core. Start with the pull, core, hips, pull through, stand up, arms up. Engage the core, hip hinge, pull through, stand up, arms up. And if you just kind of do that form, you'll be at, you'll be great at it in no time. All right, so let's talk about the sled push. Now the sled push and the sled pull are probably the two most dreaded events. Uh, maybe not dreaded, let's say intimidating events of the High Rocks competition. Now, the thing is, as long as you practice this or you get some good technique, do some strength training stuff, you'll get through it no problem. Uh, now, whether you train for it or not, I know for my first event, I really didn't properly train for it and I still got through it without a problem. Still was able to complete the competition. In fact, was able to uh, still win the competition. So um, any Anybody can do it no matter where you're at and I would never consider myself as someone who is like doing a lot of heavy lifting, right? So here are some techniques. The first thing we want to do is make sure that you kind of understand the different techniques. Now so there's one technique where you can do the stiff arm, the straight arm and you're pushing through. Um, you've, you'll also see some people where they have the bent arm. You'll 
you'll see some folks where they get into it and they kind of lift up on it. Um, and so all of that basically is just what you feel comfortable with and what you feel like you can get your best leverage with. But no matter what, you don't want to be up high, okay? So you don't want to be pushing this direction um, because what you're doing there is you're really not getting any leverage and you're not creating any kind of uh, relieving some of the friction, right? So some of the hardest parts of this is not necessarily the weight, but they're using carpet and that friction really does slow down the sled movement, okay? So the lower you can get on it, the better you're going to go. Now, in the different movements, it can also dictate what your what muscle group you're actually utilizing, okay? So if you are doing a straight arm, then this is almost like doing a overheaded uh, or overhead lunge, okay? So your hands are extended out so it can be kind of a little bit harder to breathe. Um, and then also you're working a lot harder in your core. Um, if you can get down a little bit deeper into it, so the more into the sled you can get, you start utilizing different muscle groups. So what I've found is the further over the weight of the sled you get, the more you're actually able to utilize your glutes and your hamstrings, okay? And those are really big muscle groups as compared to your quads. So the further you are away from this, the more of your quads you're gonna um, be using, okay? So I think either bent arm or all the way in is gonna be your best technique. Now, to train for this, what you're gonna need to do is you need to grab your weight, because you may not have something like carpet like this, right? You may be doing it on turf, you may be doing it on concrete. You need to load this thing up with as much weight as you possibly feel like you can handle and practice doing that multiple times over and over and over again. Um, some uh, different movements you can do to prepare for this. Squats are gonna be a great movement. Deadlifts are gonna be a great movement. Um, obviously doing a sled push is gonna be really good um, for getting better at the particular workout. Um, and then making sure that you are working in different variations where maybe just like we talked about with the skier, you're doing long, slow movements, right? So you're doing high volume or maybe you just push the sled, you know, at a lighter weight for 15, 20 times, you know, for 50 meters to 100 meters over and over again. Um, but then also doing heavy weight where you're doing shorter durations, right? Really fast, where maybe you go run for 100 meters or for 400 meters or something like that. And then you start trying to push that sled as fast as you possibly can. So really mixing it up is what's probably gonna be the best thing um, and then making sure as well that you are giving your body plenty of rest so that before you come back to that weight again you can push it with max effort all right do that I guarantee when you get to the sled it'll be no challenge at all Thank you guys so much for coming in today. We hope you got something out of that. If you did, let us know by giving a thumbs up and sharing this video. Here's the deal, no matter what the movement, no matter what the race, if you wanna give your best effort, it's all about practice. It's all about getting into to the gym, getting out there on those streets, getting on the carpet with the sled, getting on those skiers, those rowers, and practicing, practicing. It's all about repetitions, and it doesn't have to be super intense all the time. You definitely need to do some intense movements, but you definitely wanna slow it down and just work on the efficiency and the over overall ability to do your best. Thanks for coming in. Remember guys, this entire month, we're gonna be keeping, it, uh, keeping that theme with that High Rocks, learning how to be as efficient and proficient as we can be in high, as a hybrid athlete. So thanks for coming in. Remember, when you change your mind, you change your life.